Hello everyone, welcome to 3dedesignacademy.com. In this video, I will be doing a project review and provide recommendations to improve it. The model that I'm going to be taking a look at today is a Porsche 918 Spider. Actually, this is actually a very well done model. Um, the surface structures are very good. And the highlight flow is really nice. Everything is very logical. Um, there are a few things that I could provide recommendations for. However, if I was a hiring manager at an automotive company and I was uh, looking for a digital modeler, and if someone came up with a model like this, that person, that candidate, would actually be really high on the list. This is actually a really good model. Now, that's it. There are a couple of areas that I'm going to go over, so let's go ahead and get started. Actually, you know what? Let's go over uh, the good side first. So if you look at the, uh, the surface structure, everything is actually very nicely planned. So if you look at the body side, for example, there's just one sheet, one sheet over here, theoretical, and a fillet running through it. Same thing over here in the fender. The surface patches look very good. They are logically placed. They are just, they are where they're supposed to be. Uh, like and the CV structures are good. So if you look at, uh, for example, if you look at the hood surface over here, uh, the CV layout is really nice and clean. It is going across the center, which means it is going to be G3 across uh, across it. Uh, if you look at the um, the windshield, for example, everything's just uh, laid out nicely. The surface patches over here on the back is also very logically placed. So really, not not a lot for me to comment on. Now, it looks like it is missing a wing. Uh, I don't know if the person just didn't provide it or if it's in the process of building it, but everything is looking pretty good. And I think the adherence to design is also good. Proportionally, I think it looks really good. It doesn't look like a toy car or something is wrong or something's missing, things like that. Um, of course, it could you probably use a little bit more detail because right now with the headlamp and the tail lamp, Actually, I don't even know if there's a tail lamp. Uh, there's no surface, but with more details, I think this is going to become even better. Now, let's just take a look at the highlight too. If you look at this, everything is looking pretty nice. Now, it's not perfect. If you can look at the surface over here, actually the highlight flow is really nice. Uh, the rear fender looks pretty good. However, if you look at it really closely, there's of course a little bit of wiggle here and there. Um, now, in order to improve this, what you could, uh, what one could do is just try to work out the CV structure over here a little bit. If you see this, there's a little wiggle and probably just reducing the patch count. So for example, instead of having two patches over here, maybe you could try to uh, combine into one. Now, surfaces don't necessarily always have to be a single span. Uh, sometimes it's probably a little bit better to add a span uh, instead of having a little wiggle. So I'll probably recommend that over here. Um, now, the body side, actually the body side highlight is nice. However, it is a little bit different from the actual body side because if you look at this image over here, let me just zoom in over here like this, you'll see the highlight flow is somewhat straight and it actually is sort of spreads apart as it goes towards the rear. Now, the reason why that is, if you gun sight this, you'll notice that if you look at the CV structure, this is actually going in a little bit. Now, this probably needs to either, so actually, let me do this. I'm just going to do a rail over here like this, and this is going to show you how the highlight is supposed to flow. So if you look at this, the highlight flow is nice and straight instead of climbing uh, like the surface is doing over here. Now, in order to improve this, there are two things you can do. You can either push this out, which the rail is doing, or you can also push this in. Now, since uh, there's a little bit of body offset between this one, uh, the, between the sort of the rear fender area and this one, um, you, in order to keep this one, you could probably push this in and try to uh, have the surface work out uh, some of the uh, blending back into this one in the front. Now, as far as the highlight flow that is uh, spreading apart, what you could do is you could just make the rear a little bit flatter. Um, actually, that's a little bit too many CVs, so I'm just going to do an explicit control and maybe two and two and two. So let me show you what I mean. So right now, if you look at the zebra stripes like this, oh, um, or ice angle, you'll see that this is just linear. 
But if I grab this CV over here and if I push it in like this, you'll notice, oh, maybe I'll just do a little bit mouse instead of 50. You'll see that there's a slide opening up, which the picture over here is doing. Or of course, you can add a little bit more crown to the front too. So that's another way you can approach it. So I can just grab this one over here, transform CV. Uh, let's take a look. I'm just going to do a proportional. Actually, you know what? I think just just pushing this one over here so I can just do a little bit over here and that's going to let you uh, basically have the uh, highlight uh, crunch up a little bit in the middle and just spread back out uh, towards the either ends. But to be honest, um, at this level, I feel like I'm a little bit doing a little bit more nitpicking. Um, so otherwise the model looks great. Now, um, I did notice the highlight a little bit in the highlight over here on the hood. So if you look at this one, you'll see that there's a peak or negative and a peak towards the front. I did take a look at the picture and it's supposed to be consistent peak from the front to the uh, uh, from the front of the hood to the rear. Look at the guys smiling over here. Um, so uh, in order to resolve this, what I would recommend is probably just grab this uh, surface, set of surfaces over here and just push it down. So and actually, instead of doing this, I'll, I would have probably just pushed this down a little bit. And I would have also made this out of one surface too, so that it's not multiple surfaces or try to as much as possible. So basically what you want to do is just push these down, uh, these surfaces over here on the CVs. Just push it down so that it's a consistent peak from the front to the rear. And of course, you do have to do that with these also. So that it's just a peak. So let me just do this. I'm just going to copy and paste over here. I'm going to just hide some unselected. Now, when you're doing this, of course, you want to use a rail or something consistent instead of having something like this. So maybe I'll just do a duplicate over here like this. Uh, make sure the pivot's there. Yes, it is. I don't know why it's not visible. Uh, that's weird. All right, but whatever. Okay, so I'm just going to copy a rail, uh, cop so paste the curve over here. I'm just going to paste the curve over here. Actually, you know what? Let me, I think I probably need to untrim this one one more time. I'm just going to delete these surfaces. Actually, uh, I think I copied and pasted, so that should be good. All right, so let me just uh, delete the COS over here. What I would do is just move the whole surface like this, do the same thing over here, and just do a rail. Now, it can be just a rail, or we can just do a by rail since you already have two. Doesn't really matter. But that way, you have a nice consistent peak all the way through. Now, of course, the relationship between these two, let me just resize this one. Uh, that it does look like it changes a little bit. So I think what's happening is that there's probably a foot curve that goes in and this probably has to, there has to be a theoretical over here. But I, this is something I would recommend doing in order to resolve this. So let's see, I'm just going to hide these ones over here like this. And I'll probably just have this surface actually, of course, it does need to blend back in. So I'm just giving you guys an idea. Um, it's it's not the solution. Um, it's not a perfect solution. So I'm just showing it to you. But basically this surface over here, I'm just going to hide these as well. Now I, sh I wish it was one curve. Actually, let me just hide this copy the curve too. So what I would do is I would just put this over here like this and let's just make this into a degree two. Like that. I'm just going to quickly mimic it. Once up. And it probably, I should probably just create one line for the hood all the way through and this would actually be a different section. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do something like that. Project from Z or normal, doesn't really matter. And I'll probably just do a rail and that should sort of take care of this shape over here. So that's going to allow you to keep this shape over here, this line and still keep the negative. And once you just blend uh, between the two, that's going to give you a pretty nice um, 
shape over there. Now, of course, right now, I, because I didn't refine it, you'll see that it goes from a positive peak into a negative peak. So, of course, that does need to be uh, handled a little bit better. Um, however, I'm just giving you a basic idea of how to correct that. But like I said, uh, still the model looks pretty good, so no complaints there. Now, uh, I did notice that, that there was a little bit issue with the CV, so, so something, it's it's a little bit minor, but of course that this can be resolved a little bit better. So just to straightening this out, so I will probably just do a um, either fit curve or with less degrees in order to resolve this. Um, I'm guessing that could have been due to how this was uh, aligned. So in this case, what I would do is, just strike a fit curve over here, like this. So less degrees the better. So let's see, it looks like it's taking a little bit of time. And I will just realign these ones over here. But uh, let's see, I'm just going to go ahead and delete the construction history over here. And I'll probably connect these ones to this one because this is much larger instead of going the other way around. It's quite possible that uh, the person who created this model uh, aligned this surface to this one instead of the other way around so that could have been the cause but just doing this is going to help tremendously so you know what let me just uh, turn the symmetry off like that so now with this uh fit curve done like this what i can do is i can just do a position align over here oops uh, i think i need to untrim this surface over here and i'm just going to extend this one all the way to the back like this and I'm just going to align it, the surface to the curve. Position set to max. So now the CV distribution is a lot more even. Of course, that is going to create a little bit of discrepancy here. But with this one, what you can do is uh, you can just uh, refit it with a square. So I'm going to say one, two, three, and four. Of course, one does need to be curvature. So I'm just going to set that to curvature. And let's see. So I'm going to, oh, it looks like degree four works too. That makes it even cleaner than uh, previously. So that's much better. The CV structure is a little bit cleaner. And if you just want to make it, you know, just decrease, increase it to degree five, the CV layout is going to be a lot better. And it's still going to, because I did curvature here, it's still going to be curvature to the surface on the bottom. Uh, so let's check on that. So surface continue tool, show max label, show comb on. And yeah, that's still achieved curvature and it's cleaner than before. So that is something uh, you could do too. Oh, um, and lastly, let's see. Yeah, uh, everything else looks pretty good. Now, lastly, I think I'm going to just cover this one. Now, this is also very minor, but if you see the surface structure over here, it's a little bit tight. The fillet usually needs to be a little bit bigger. If you look at this, I think this is due to this theoretical being like this. So I guess it. if you look at the tangent line and compared to the theoretical, I think it's uh, the distance from here to the theoretical over here. And this distance over to here is a little bit imbalanced. Of course, this one on the top is a little bit shorter. In order to connect this one line to line, I'm guessing the creator of this model also made it, uh, did it like this. But um, I think this one probably needs a little bit of rework. Even if you look at this model, I think it's supposed to be a little bit more consistent. So what I would do is add, even just looking at the shape over here, let me just resize this one. What I do is add a little bit more puff here. So I will just bring the surface down and that's going to allow this corner to travel down a little bit. And that's going to create a little bit of better surface inter, uh, interaction between this one and this one. Because the problem is if you have a sharp angle like this, the fillet, it's a little bit more difficult to create the fillet. But if this line comes down a little bit, that's going to create a little bit more diagonal theoretical, which should help with this. So I think just having that um, should help improve the model. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think that's look, uh, looking pretty good. Now, um, yeah, overall, this is a really good model. Uh, you probably want to add trims like these just to add a little bit more detail. And because uh, Porsche, of course, being a supercar, has a lot of details like these. So just adding those details, maybe doing some minimum fillets uh, on the gaps over here, I think that's just going to make an already strong 
model even stronger. But yeah, this is a really, really, really good model. Um, improvements are only going to make it better. Um, there are there aren't a lot of models who can model to this quality, so very impressed with it. And yeah, so I suggested this person to just keep going and make it even better than this. All right, thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Want to learn more? Then become a member at 3ddesignacademy.com where you will find hundreds of video tutorials ranging from basics, including curve creations, intermediate level tutorials such as this wheel, all the way to class A modeling of the interior car exterior. Interested? Visit 3ddesignacademy.com.